But before we welcome Linda, let me say a few words about our final speaker, Beverly Brown. Beverly's career has shown that it is possible to be both a professor and a curator, each on the highest level, as she has taught at Harvard and Princeton, I remember her fascinating class on Michelangelo there, as well as organizing exceptional exhibitions at the National Gallery of Art Washington, the Palazzo Grassi Venice, the Kimball Art Museum Texas, and the Royal Academy of Arts in London. Some of the most memorable of these include Jacopo Bassano in 1992, Giambattista Tiepolo, master of the oil sketch in 1993, Renaissance Venice and the North in 1999, and the Genius of Rome, 1592 to 1623 in 2001, a truly remarkable range. Recently, she has turned her mind to the meaning of certain meaningful details in the portraits and secular paintings of Lorenzo Lotto and Titian, leading to her contribution to today's lecture series, Marriage in the Renaissance, What's Love Got to Do With It? I bet everything that you just saw and you just heard reminds you of a wedding. <laughs> and what I want to tell you this afternoon, that in the 16th century, if you were looking at Titian's painting of sacred and profane love, absolutely everything in it as well would remind you of a wedding. Now, before I talk about it, I'm going to um, remove my wedding veil. <laughs> And I want to talk a little bit first, before we come to Titian, about how one got married during the Renaissance. Uh, as we've already heard, uh, Dora mentioned earlier, that it was an arrangement usually made between two families. The two fathers would get together, and they would sign a contract. They would agree on how much the dowry was going to be worth. And then the bride and groom, usually for the first time, would meet when a ring was exchanged. And you can see here uh, in a, a, 15th, a late 15th century fresco in Florence by uh, the school of Domenico Ghirlandaio that uh, in this case, the girl's family didn't have enough money for her dowry, so a company, the Bonomini, have provided the dowry for her. And you can see as the ring is put on her finger, the groom is getting paid off down here. He's getting coins uh, in his hand. In another um, more or less contemporaneous painting from the Veneto uh, by someone named Michele da Verona, which is now in Berlin, uh, you can see once again the very same thing happening that the groom is putting a ring on the bride's hand. And I have to say, when the ring goes on to the hand, that was the legal uh, moment of the marriage. But the whole festivities would take sometimes weeks, sometimes months, sometimes even over a year to have the marriage ceremonies and festivities all be completed. And as um, Andrea Baer's really excellent essay in the introduction to the catalog explains, these procedures varied from Rome to Florence to Venice, but in general, even though some of them might have been a bit different, the uh, concept behind it was more or less the same. 
but you might notice what the bride is very subtly doing, that she is revealing, she's opening her skirt. So as she accepts the ring, which is her uh, really saying, yes, I will marry you, she's actually showing what she is bringing to the wedding, which is her generative uh, power. In Lorenzo Lato's very famous double marriage portrait of Marsilio and Festina Cossotti getting married, you can see a, a very mischievous little Cupid who is literally yoking them together. Uh, and he is placing a ring on her finger. And what's interesting here is he's placing it not on the traditional way from Roman times on down where you joined right hands, but he's placing it on her left hand. And that's because around this time, various marriage treatises, both Francesco Barbaro and Altieri, tell us that on the left hand, there was a vein or uh, perhaps a nerve that went directly from that finger to the heart. And over time, uh, you began to get rings placed on the left hand rather than the right. I also might point out that Faustina is wearing a red dress. And in fact, the most popular color for brides was red. Although you could get dressed in any kind of color for these ceremonies, um, it was the opulence that really counted of the fabric. But red was by far the most popular color. Now, after the ring had been accepted, the groom would then give a series of gifts to his betrothed. And here we see a portrait by uh, Palma Vecchio known as La Bella. And in it, you can see she has a little box, very much like some of the ones that are upstairs in the exhibition that are known as um, <clears throat> little coffinetta. And those would be filled, if you look at uh, her box, you can sort of see with more rings, with golden necklaces, with blue ribbons, uh, what Boccaccio referred to as all the paraphernalia uh, of weddings. And you might, um, you might actually, where is that in the slide? Ah, there it is. Uh, you might actually also uh, give your wife a belt. And you can see in this detail from a 15th century print a little shop over here, which is a goldsmith shop. And you'll see back on the back wall, belts. And then you see all sorts of sorts of other objects that uh, are very similar to the ones that you've seen uh, today, made out of myalica. Uh, they could also be made out of glass, or they could be made out of metal. And these would be gifts that the groom would give to his bride-to-be and later on they might very well be displayed at the wedding. Now at the same time, uh, you might actually have the groom, and this again is the groom, who would provide cassone, marriage chests, very large uh, boxes in which they usually came in pairs and they were brought to the bride's house, and the bride would then fill them with her trousseau, with the linens and all the things that she was going to take to her new married life. Uh, in Florence and Siena, as you'll see upstairs in the exhibition, they were most often uh, painted with sort of uxorial moral stories. Uh, while in Venice, as you can see, and this is Titian's Venus of Urbino in the background back there, the um, cassoni were often of carved uh, wood. And here in a um, <clears throat> 15th century, this is a detail from a cassoni by uh, Lo Scaggia, uh, which is showing part of the story of the justice of Trajan in which the widow uh, is actually given somebody to marry. And you can see here is a cassone uh, being paraded through the streets to her house. And in fact, just before uh, the wedding was actually consummated, what would happen is that these cassones would be uh, triumphantly marched through the city to the groom's house from the bride's house, and then a large banquet would ensue. <clears throat> 